Hello, my pack, my tribe. Welcome to Howling After Dark. Tonight is going to be pretty cool, I think. Uh, it's about the ancient world, or, or the ancient world, or more specifically, uh, remnants of the ancient world that you can actually go and see today. And it kind of answers the question, are they haunted and why? Um, see, I, I, I need to explain something to, uh, those who may be listening that, that have never heard my show before. Um, at a very early age, I had a near-death experience, and ever since then, I can see the spirit world. Um... <clears throat> I see spirits, uh, not just ghosts, um, you know, I, I've seen angels and demons and everything else in between, and, uh, a part of that ability or gift or whatever you want to call it is, I also see spiritual energy, um, a key example is uh, when a building is actually haunted, I can see like energy emanating off the building itself. Uh, like, like to me, the only way I could really describe it is kind of like you know how he, you can see heat waves rising off of asphalt on a really hot summer day, summer day. That's what it looks like, sort of. Um, to me, anyways. Uh, and I can see uh, what they call ley lines, which are, uh, you know, depending on who you talk to, um, some people think that they're uh, like like invisible electromagnetic energy, which is sort of true, I guess. And uh, other people think that it's spiritual energy, which I full, fully believe because I can see them. Um, Um, a, a lot of the things I see like that, like, like I don't think I have adequate, adequate words to describe to you, really. Um, just kind of picture lines of, of like energy or like electricity, like massive lines, like super highways of energy, like spider webbing all over the the world. That's kind of what it looks like to me, sort of. Um, and uh, where these points meet, they're called nexus points. And occasionally, where there's nexus points, there's doorways, or portals, uh, rifts, even, uh, which are like massive openings into the other world. And, uh, I don't know if it's by accident or by design, but it seems like a lot of these these ancient uh, wonders of the world, if you will, are built on these sites in particular. Um, now, uh, there, there are a lot of these places, are, there's always been kind of an air of mystery about them. Uh, and they're, you know, pretty much since they were rediscovered. Uh, places like Cairo, w when they uh, when they found uh, uh, Tutankhamun's tomb, that's King Tut to you and I, uh, and uh, all the the researchers and, and the grave diggers and and everybody basically involved with that that particular archaeological dig. Uh, mysteriously died. Um, they kind of, uh, you know, put it off onto this, you know, mummy's curse kind of thing. I, I, I'm, I don't think that's what happened. I think, uh, and like other people uh, said, no, it's because of like all these toxins that are re released when they open the tent 
him and, and yada 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 I think that the truth is actually somewhat of a, a happy medium but it does bring up a good point that there regardless of what you believe there are places in the world that will always have an error mystery about them and one thing we do know um is that uh, a group out of uh, out of Cairo, Egypt, a paranormal investigative group was uh, actually released an article that I think came out on uh, uh, Huffington Post, um, probably like some, like sometime last year, I believe it was. I, I would have to go looking for it again. But uh, the point is, is they released this article, and it was all about how activity there has suddenly been heightened. As it never has before. And that seems to be kind of like, like uh, a worldwide phenomena of late. Because it's not just in Cairo, it's, uh, you know, it's it, similar stuff at Stonehenge and Easter Island has been happening. Um, both, uh, well, Easter Island is kind of an interesting one because they, they have had ghosts associated with Easter Island since it was first discovered back in... Uh, I want to say like the 1600s. It might have been the 1700s, but um, and when I say discovered, I mean by you know white people, because obviously they're the ones who write the history. Um, but regardless, they uh, it was discovered by whoever I don't remember, and. Uh, Ever since then, there's been all sorts of uh, uh, supernatural or paranormal tales about Easter Island. And, and one of the more common ones is their hauntings. In fact, a TV show actually went to Easter Island. I believe it was Destination Truth. Went to Easter Island and investigated there and they were getting some amazing activity. Activity that, like, yeah, I know it's TV. It, it's feasible that because it's TV, it could have been faked, yada, yada, yada. But looking at it objectively as a paranormal investigator, this is the kind of activity that I would look at and go, huh, okay, there's something going on here. You know, and uh, similar things have happened at Stonehenge. Stonehenge has actually been get, getting a lot of UFO activity, actually. Um, a lot of the, the uh, United Kingdom uh, UFO sightings over probably like the past two years has been, been over and around the area where Stonehenge is in... Uh, uh, Northern England, I believe it is. But there's other places that, um, that aren't as heavily publicized. Um, when, when I was, uh, putting together the, uh, well, what what I call the event pack for the show, which is like when I, I our, we have a YouTube or not a YouTube, uh, a Facebook page. That's a Facebook community page for Ghost of Paranormal and and uh, one actually for Ghost of Radio, and that's where we post everything about the radio show and about the web series on there, and. Uh, you can find that on Facebook, by the way. Just look up Ghost Hole Paranormal. 
Ghost Wolf, one word, capital G, capital W, um, and uh, so you can find us there, and please stop by, give us a like, we would greatly appreciate that, but uh, when, when I was putting that together, I was looking for a picture that kind of conveyed like that air of mystery that I was talking about, and I found this picture that kind of fit perfectly with, uh, it, you know, especially considering one of the places I'm talking about tonight is uh, ancient Babylon. Now, uh, Babylon and Cairo, uh, and I think even Stonehenge actually uh, have something in common. And, and that they were um, part of the the uh, seven wonders of the world, and uh, Babylon was the uh, the ancient name uh, for the the capital of Persia, which we know now as Iraq. Um. In fact, much of modern-day Baghdad is built on the ruins. Uh, it was actually, uh, at the time, it was on fertile plains between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Um, It was originally a small Semitic city, meaning that it was predominantly Jewish uh, in its origin. And then, you know, it kind of went a different direction from there. And I'm not going to get into all that because that gets into religion and, and all those views. And I don't agree with those views because those views are, are colored by uh, faulty history, to be honest about it. Um, but that area for years has been uh, documented as very, very haunted. Even United States troops during both Persian Gulf Wars were were uh, on their spare time. They would go into like these these tunnels and stuff, uh, which would have been underneath the the ancient part of that city and. Uh, they were having ghostly encounters. Um, and a few of those you've probably seen on, on certain shows. I want to say hello to uh, the lovely Reagan and Jeremy, who are, are in my chat room right now. Hi, guys. Always glad to see you. Um, so, yeah. You know, and... Uh, the the thing is, is like, I I don't know if like the people that built these places like actually had it in mind, like if maybe you know they're they're shaman or 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 holy men or or prophets or whatever you want to call them, maybe had vision like mine and could actually see these things and decided that's where to build the cities, or or whatever you know the pyramids what have you I don't know if that was the intent or not but uh, it's certainly a good question and I think it's one of those questions that people are kind of failing to ask maybe because you know maybe it's because I see the world differently I don't know but uh, it's definitely an interesting question One of the more well-documented uh, haunted places on our list tonight actually is Rome. Now, I know you say Rome nowadays. Almost everybody thinks of the of the Vatican, but um, Rome is far older than that. Um, 
first of all, it is. Just in case you don't know your history, it is way older than there's been a Catholic church. It's way older than there's been Christianity, in fact. Um, it, it, in fact, the establishment of Rome actually predates Christianity by about 500 to 1,000 years. Um, but I, I digress. Um, and there are certain spots in Rome that are heavily, heavily haunted. Um, I, I, I feel that, uh, you know, myself in particular and my team, uh, Ghost of Paranormal, have been blessed in a lot of ways. And one of those ways is we have been contacted by teams all over the world. Um, that's part of the popularity of the show, which we don't always see in chat. Because usually in chat, there's between three and five people usually. Um, that doesn't mean that those are the only people listening. And for all of those out there that aren't in our chat room, I want to say hello to you. And it's, it's, I'm very glad that you're listening, by the way. Um, but uh, one of the teams that contacted me is actually from Italy. Um, I don't think they're actually from Rome, but I could be mistaken. Um, but uh, they they, they were uh, telling me about how the Colosseum has been incredibly active lately and how people that live in the area around the Colosseum have heard, like, battle sounds and, like, you know, uh, roaring crowds and things of that nature, things associated with the glass auditorial games that took place there and uh, you know, I, don't, I don't I can't say that that's definitely paranormal because you know I wasn't there to experience it but what I can say is it's definitely interesting that all these places that were built in these spots the activity has been increasing Now, I have my own theories as to why. Um, you know, I, and I'll share that theory with you, but I I think it's important for people to make up their own minds too. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But um, I'm like, I'm not at all Christian. I'm, I'm not really, um, you know, I don't have a problem with it per se, I think they're wrong in, in, in a lot of ways, but the ones I have a problem with are, are more of the uh, hypocritical uh, vein than anything else. You know, I don't have a problem with people simply because they are Christian. Um, you know, people are, are free to believe whatever they want, but... Um, I think that it's it's uh, it's interesting how their own book, the Bible, says uh, something about in I believe it's in Revelations, if I'm not mistaken, where it actually talks about um, a time when the dead shall roam the earth. You know something about the end of days as it were and I don't know if that's like prophecy on the part of whoever wrote that portion of the Bible as much as it is uh, observation because I've always noticed when something big is about to happen whether it be the first Persian Gulf War or 9-11 or uh, you know when uh when the bombing happened in Boston or, or any of that stuff, I've always noticed that spiritual activity heightens. And I think 
think more than like like religious prophecy or anything of that nature. I think it, what it actually is is like spirits, the, the good natured spirits, which are the ones that we mostly deal with, um, are actually trying to warn people. Because I think because you know time doesn't really have a lot of meaning for them. They can catch glimpses of future events, and I think uh, when some Something is going to go down that's big like that. I think they try and warn us about it. But, you know, obviously they can't communicate like you, you and I do. You know, they, they can't go, hey, Bob, you might want to look out, you know. <laughs> it's not a possibility for them. It, it it takes a lot of energy for them for even to be noticed most of the time. So, um. I think that's what that is, honestly, um, just my opinion. And so uh, it's been argued that like all this paranormal activity has to do with, you know, this passage in the Bible. I disagree. I think that these spirits are aware that uh, something big is about to go down. Just my personal opinion. I don't think it is necessarily related to the Bible per se. But I think whoever did write about that in the Bible probably had some kind of foresight, and that's just how he interpreted it. So, there you go. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah, Rome has been getting crazy, uh, uh, particularly around the Colosseum, um, but not limited to there. Um, there's other places in Rome that have been getting crazy, um, as well, uh, I don't remember all their names. I know one of them, it, it's the Palazzo, Palazzo di something, I can't, hold on, let me see if I can't find the name of this. I'm so horrible with names, folks, so bear with me. It's not that one. <clears throat> Maybe that one. No, not that one either. Uh, the Palazzo, the Palazzo Vecchio. No, that's not it either. That's in Florence. I don't remember the name of it. Although I think there is something going on there too. Um, I mean, the place is definitely old enough for it. But it, it's in Rome. The place I'm thinking of is Rome. It's it was at originally uh, the palace of a uh, Italian count. And I think now it's like a hotel. And I can't, it's Palazzo D something or other. And I can't remember the last part of the name. But uh, there's stuff going on there too. People have seen apparitions on the fourth floor. Um, like so one guy even, even reported having a full-on conversation. <laughs> conversation with the ghost that uh, turned out to be a ghost. He didn't know that at first. He thought he was talking to a real person in the in the hallway up on the fourth floor. Because like uh, in like there it's like real ritzy you know and they have like there's not just a lobby on, on the first floor. There's kind of like little lobby kind of areas on each floor. And he was on the in that area on the fourth floor, just kind of chilling out. 
and uh, somebody came down and sat next to him, and they, he had like, like he described a 45 minute long conversation with somebody about, uh, you know, trouble in his relationship, and he described like this kindly older gentleman that uh, actually turned out to be uh, the guy who first turned the plaza into a hotel. He kind of like, like uh, uh, founded the hotel there. And, uh, you know, like, like 50 or 60 years earlier and had long since passed. So, uh, you know, gee, these places are all connected by ley lines, evidently. And, uh, and many, most of them, if not all of them, are actually right on top of these nexus points, the points where the ley lines intersect. Uh, which are said to give off more spiritual energy than anywhere else. And from what I've seen, I, I can totally believe that. You know? So, uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, other places too that, that um, like Easter Island, like I said before, like Easter Island has had a long history of, of paranormal activity there. I mean, uh, pretty much as far back as, you know, when it was first discovered. You know, um, uh, there are several islands in the Bermuda Triangle that have, you know, of course, the same situation going on. Um, there's uh, Stonehenge, like I mess, mess, blah, blah, blah. mentioned. Damn it! <laughs> the uh, uh, Parthenon in uh, Athens, the ancient part of Athens, is extremely haunted. Like, like they have like poltergeist type activity going on there. Like, people have been scratched and pushed. Certain people can't have, have been pushed to the point where they can't even make it through the entrance into the Parthenon. Which is crazy. Um... The uh, Olympiad is has been haunted for years. Um, Olympiad is like the Colosseum in Rome. It, it's where the original Olympics were said to have been held. Um, the uh, the uh, I forget what the name is in Greek, but it, it's basically where the the uh, all the philosophers used to hang out. It's like like, like that typical atypical, you know, like uh, Athens structure that you always see the the big white building with with the big white Greek columns in front. Um, there, there's one in particular, I think. I can't for the life of me remember the name of it now. I'm having such a brain fart tonight. Bear with me. Um, but it's where... It, I mean, you could look it up. Look up, you know, where Socrates and Plato hung out and you'll find it. Um, but they've had tons of stuff going on there. Um... You know, mostly haunting type stuff, but the the stuff there has been more like uh, trickery based. It's like it's almost like these ancient philosophers have a sense of humor because they like, you know, I don't know, making fun of people. I guess. Um, hi, Becca, who just came into chat. Um, 
so yeah, there's that place too. And and uh, let me see. I'm gonna try and find this for you guys. to find it later but there there was actually a video on YouTube about uh, you know the haunted activity in Athens and how crazy it's getting um, another place coincidentally which uh, it, it wasn't part of the seven wonders wonders of the world but I think it kind of should have been um, actually two places now that I think about it um, one is the the catacombs underneath uh, uh, Paris, France. Um, there are uh, they actually have these guides that will take you down there because it will going down there after dark is technically illegal in Paris because they they they're not really open to the public. Uh, unless you're actually there on a paid tour um, during the day but at night they're closed down and that, that's when most of the haunted activity happens but there are there's like a whole subculture of these guides that will take you down there and uh, uh, take you to places that uh, uh, aren't on the regular tour and that's a good thing because like the regular tour doesn't go to the greater portion of what's down there. I mean, there are miles and miles and miles of tunnels. These tunnels literally cover the entirety of Paris, France. I mean, they're gigantic. Uh, there's actually tunnels that have never been in since they, they were built, basically. But that's on one of these these spots I'm talking about. And then the other one that, that uh, you know, that also kind of brought to mind was the, uh, the, uh, of vaults in Edinburgh, Scotland. So... Yeah, and uh, of course, you know, uh, when we come back for part two, I'm going to talk about um, my personal favorite of these spots in the entire world, the Anasazi Ruins in New Mexico. Um, well, they're not just New Mexico, they're New Mexico and Arizona and part of Colorado and all that. So, uh, yeah, we will get into that, and and uh, but the the main one, the big hub one, is actually in New Mexico, and the activity there of late has been insane. It's actually almost gotten scary. 
I mean, to me, almost got scary. So, you know, that's saying quite a bit. But, uh, sticking with the old world for the time being, uh, another place that is heavily haunted that you'll probably, probably, probably never ever see on TV, you'll probably never hear, like, real, like, like, uh, mainstream reports on it at all, believe it or not, is the Kremlin in Moscow, um, Russia. They have had haunting activity there for years. Years. Like, it was so bad at one point in the 80s that Gorbachev refused to work anywhere other than in his home. Because he did not want to go to the Kremlin. Same thing. Uh, Putin uh, ended up like like going kind of overboard with stuff, and uh, uh, they found out that uh, he was actually uh, spending quite a bit of time with. Uh, uh, like like uh, psychics, but more like the fortune teller type, I guess. You know, and uh, because of all the spiritual activity happening, so crazy, crazy stuff. I wouldn't doubt it at all that the White House is haunted. By the way, um, because I know that that's on, like Washington D.C. is basically a big nexus point. And the White House is kind of like right in the center of it. So I wouldn't at all doubt it, you know, just personally. I don't know if there's been any claims. If there has been, we will probably never, ever, ever, ever hear about them. Because, of course, the official standing on anything paranormal, supernatural, UFO related is it does not exist. That's the official standing. So, and if you don't believe that, seriously, go ask a a park ranger that works in a very haunted location, and it doesn't matter how long they've been there or what they may have experienced. Their their official answer to any questions you have about it are, oh, I've never seen anything like that. I've never experienced anything. It doesn't exist. It's because it's the 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 federal tagline that they tell people. But you can tell just by looking at their face that they kind of know. They know what's up. You know, probably one of the more haunted places in the world, actually. Uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, got distracted there for a second. Uh, another one of my, my long-lost relatives just added me on Facebook. So. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... You know, uh, I can't, of course, prove that these are where the ley lines are. I just know it, uh, you know, on a personal basis. So I can't, you know, if people don't believe me about it. I, I can't, there's nothing I can offer them to convince them, um, nor am I really interested in it. You know, it's up to people to, um, you know, believe or not believe on on their own 
decision making power you know uh, I can't do that for people but uh, all I can talk about is is what I see what I experience and uh, what I believe and if that opens somebody's mind then great if not then okay